This is Abnormal Entertainment. Two, three, four. Walk into the tunnel just to find the light. Hunted for all demons, looking for a fight. Looked up at the stars, seemed to go forever. There must be a way it all fits together. Fell into the quicksand, held on to the vines. Never could quite color, stay within the lines. Feels like I have wings, I can fly wherever. This is just a way it all fits together. Finally saw the world through rose-colored glasses. Gonna share my journey to small and large masses. Give up on my life, no sir, me never. This is how I put it together. This is how I put it together. This is how I put it together. All right, so now that we have the book guide and we've explained it, where it comes from. Oh, did it mess up? Is it good? No, 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 you're okay. good. Um, can you, uh, are you going to, so do you have a I'm chapter picked to, out? Or a I'm going page? to uh, first do my video, uh, 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 what I did, and um, I wrote the back of the book because I wanted people to know exactly what I was talking about before they open it because they read the back to, to hopefully open the front. Right. Does your love life suck? Do you know a friend or relative whose love life sucks? Usually, yes, you do. How long? Has your your friendly relative's love life sucked? Have you exhausted every option to unsuck your love life? What have you done? What have they done? And I have a whole book that tells them what they do in order to unsuck it. And then I said, hi, my name is Eddie Rubin, and I'm an absolute expert. I mean, well-versed. Uh... I mean, okay, self-appointed guru in love life protocol. And the thing that makes me the most the authority first is first how I actually obtained such a goddess of a woman, now my wife, and how I actually kept that goddess of a woman, which has led me to make a conscious commitment to my family and my, and my marriage well into its 15-year mark and on its way to the eternal love palace, baby. Yeah, we're going to make love in heaven, baby. That's awesome. You got it? That's awesome. So, I made a very poignant, wonderful book. And uh, we'll get to some of the chapters. But some of the chapters, I wanted the women to know, which is the first half of the book, what they had to do if their love life sucks. Starting with, but not limited to, Hygiene. Yeah. Okay. And then we have grooming and fashion. And we have one night stand, so you thought. <laughs> Did we have abandon expectation and embrace reality? Hmm. That's for women. That's good. Okay. Love equals work. Mm hmm. Oral. Mm hmm. Yeah. That oral. Jealous and delusional. We know about them. This is all to the women. Desperation. Marriage. And then we get to the men's section. Ooh. Grooming and fashion. Yes. Buddy girls. The girl you thought you were going to fuck, but you're not because she doesn't want to. Kiss her and shut up. Sex first. Talk later. Communication breakdown. Dating. Relationships. You get what you ask for. I do. And the moral. My first chapter opens. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and gentlemen who wish they were ladies, and ladies who wish they were gentlemen, and everyone else who decided to open this intriguing paperback and or downloaded it to your tablet with a title you just couldn't resist. My name is Eddie, 
Nice to meet you. How are you? Good to see you. <laughs> and ironically enough, I'm a man who loves being a man who loves women for all that they are and possess. First and foremost, Mr. Daniel Garza, I was birthed through my, mo my mother's canal of life. I watched all three of my children exit my wife as they entered into this incredibly special, complex, beautiful, filthy, wretched, lovely world. Unlike a lot of men who watch their children being born, never wanting to have sex with their wives or significant others ever again because of the absolute glory, bloody, placenta-ridden disaster they just witnessed of childbirth, I embraced it for the beauty of life gifted, Daniel. Then I relished the crowning of all of my children's heads and cheered on as my delicate flower of a wife dug her perfectly manicured nails into my vulnerable flesh <laughs> while she made her final push in lion's roar, unloading that precious little monster out of her maternal orifice. Then moving on to the anticipation of what would behold after an incredible journey from, yeah, baby, oh, yeah, this is good, to, what? You're pregnant? <laughs> oh, and the 40-plus weeks of not only the incubation of the evolving child inside, but the ever-evolving relationship between me and my gorgeous, loving, awesome sauce wife. Love is a decision. Being with someone is a choice. Does your love life suck? Well, keep reading and unsuck it. That's awesome. That's the opening of my book. That is, that is I think, for those of you listening or watching, uh, if that doesn't get your attention, I don't know what will. Uh, now we have the chapters, we have the opening. Where did the art come from? I mean, you, you, you explained it, but... I commissioned... I put out on Facebook for an artist, for a graphic artist. I looked at I looked at a few, uh, I looked at a few uh, people who answered my ad. They replied, and I looked at all the work, and I saw this girl named Cassie Tucker. Okay, I think she's out of Maryland. I never, you don't even know what she looks like. And I said, you know, I think your your work is kind of cool. It's a little quirky, a little awesome. I need you to do. I need, I need a cover. Would you go, and uh, we'll work together, and I'll give you the deposit. I think, I think we can go ahead and get started. So, so I commissioned her, and uh, she came back with a sketch. And I looked at this thing, and I said, okay, well, I'm not going to stop her. I didn't give her any notes. Oh, awesome. I said, I'm going to let the artist be an artist. Right. It's a girl interpreting my book based on what I told her. I said, I'm going to see it with the color. Once I see it with the color, I'll know. But I saw what she was doing already. And um, if you look on the back of the book, there's some really cool hidden stuff here. Right here above my head is a flower. But it's actually a vagina flower. Oh. Yes. And right over here, over here is? would be another wonderful little, it's an actually one of the more exotic flowers, the penis flower. Yes. Right there. Oh, and another vagina flower at the top. In the gay world, we call it the peepee -pee flower, but yeah. whatever. The pee -pee, that's for you guys. Yeah, the peepee <laughs> Yeah. Got it. We'll get that. This will apply to gay, gay too, a little bit. So then let's dive in. Uh, you know, I, 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 I can read more in the beginning, but yeah, let's dive into something. Can I? Sure. We're down to okay. the last 10 minutes, but go ahead. Oh, sh well, but I'm going to do grooming and fashion for okay. women. Okay. Okay? Well... And I'm going to read a little something for the men, and then we'll call it a day. Okay. Almost, kind of, sort of. Okay. So, hi, hey, Jennifer, how are you? So, how does your hair look? How about your nails? Toenails? Makeup? Or lack of makeup? What about your clothing style? How are your shoes? Do you clean your ears? Do you have a mustache? Do you have a beard? What about your pubic hair? Do you still have pubic hair? And if you do, if you still have pubic hair... Why and how much? What about your butt crack? Is there hair there? If so, why? Bleached or brown? What is the condition of your lips? Are they chapped? Do you wear lipstick or chapstick? Is it matte or glossy? Well, these are some of the questions you have to ask yourself daily because 
your potential lovers or current are looking at all these things. And if you aren't aware or conscious of these crucial aspects regarding the personal delivery of your fashion being, then you are in a stupor of insentience and need to consult deeply with your mirror, your closet, and the people who should have told you. Do I have to explicate? Get funky with it. Start caring, boo. And if you're already caring, then you go. Then you go, bitch. Own that shit. But take care of your girlfriends who are desperately in need of help. Wear clothes that complement your body type. But then again, men sometimes can give a tootsie roll about all that because they're just trying to get their tootsie roll in your candy bowl. Step into my candy bowl. Working mind and body and soul. Wanna give you love. Okay? The singing is not in the book, by the way, so... It's, <laughs> is it in the book? It's in the audio book. Oh, okay. I have a full audio book that backs this book up with sound effects, I didn't get music, to the audio book, okay. And a full extravaganza think, for your ears. There you go, guys. I sorry. have a very groundbreaking audio book. And you read the book. I did the whole thing. Honestly. But those are the guys we're talking about. Remember, you're trying to land the man with a plan who ain't no scam, who knows how to be a ham... Driving your love tram. It's time to go to the salon, ladybug. Or if your wallet is having issues, then super cuts, fantastic Sam's, or budget cuts. But don't tell anyone. Just say you went to cut the super. <laughs> get your hair did, get your nails did, get your toes did. Start caring, sunshine, because if you don't, then other women will pass you by holding hands with the man you've been trying to stare because they stepped up to the how to present oneself plate. Get some new jeans. Jeans are a staple foundation garment. They make everything look better. Side note, the tighter the better. Show that asset. Guys want to see your legs and your gluteus to the maximus because that's what gets the balls rolling. Mm. <laughs> knee, -high, knee high boots are hot or an eclectic heel will do the job. Flats, not so much, unless you want to look your real height. Save that for lying down. Let's face it. Heels suck and kill your feet and were invented by a man because they make the line of your legs clean and long and they look great up in the air. Let that sink in. So, choose wisely. Don't get cut up in your weight or how your body looks in clothing too much. Perfect is a myth, honey. We don't care if you look if you look like you tried. That's good enough. The better you look, the quicker those clothes are coming off anyway. Isn't that the objective? Clothes are for hoes. Just kidding, ho. You get the picture. Don't be offended. You can't be alone. Oh, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. Okay. Anyways. <laughs> That's pretty good. I, I like your, your style. You like it? Yeah. Okay, good. So... The book's riddled with that. And this is one from the men's section. Okay. Telling men that who want to hang out with gir uh, girls and not make a move and think they're having sex and think they're going to be friends with a girl. Uh, it's not going to happen because she knows. So, buddy girls, definition of girl you never have sex with but will always want to and spend as much time trying to do so but never will because she knew from the first time that she met you that you were never going to penetrate her vagina with your penis. In the meantime, you thought that by being her friend that you would somehow miraculously get her naked with her legs wide open saying the words, please put it in. I am so sorry that you had to read that or hear that. And even more so, sorry that it actually happened to you. I feel your aching and sustained torturous pain, for real. I'm so pissed for you at those sweet, wonderful, courteous women who led you on because they wanted a straight guy friend who didn't want to fuck them. Unless the girl looks like Jabba the Hutt, Yoda, Beast, Mr. Magoo, then you will be playing in a pit of sexless marshmallows. So let's get through this jointly so it never happens again. Cool. That's, that's good. Now I want to go listen to the... Because I, I read the, the chapter you said you can, you can find one little part. And that's what I want you to go read. But now I'm going to go back and get the, the audio version. It's a fun book. I put it all on the line. I talk about 
the things that should be talked about, you know. And uh, you'll le- women will learn something about themselves, and men will learn something about themselves. And really, what I'm trying to get at at the book, the over the underlying story of this book is victory over your self confidence. Nice victory over your doubts. Now, before we go, I, a couple of questions. Like. Where does the confidence, st- is there a start? Is it in your gut? It's in my gut. Is, is it in your look, your tone of voice? Is it different? How, where does yours start? My confidence? Yeah. I, I, just, fe- I just feel confident because, uh, because of my ability to, to connect with the human being and everything around. So we yeah. could say that your ability to connect is your confidence starter. That's your spark. Knowing that you can connect to people is... is yeah, the confidence. If, if we it, had to narrow it down, uh, my it's just inside, and I'm I'm able to tap into it okay. uh, on many levels, which cool. is my which has freed my mind, and the rest followed. Oh, I, I know that's <laughs> free your mind, and the rest will follow. Well, I'm gonna definitely think about you as I'm moving forward, in, 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 in <laughs> when I need to find that extra. Cajones to, to move. Yeah. Uh, especially with everything that I'm involved in. I, I sometimes need to walk in like I own the place for people to, to respect that I know what I'm doing. Right. Because uh, you're right. A lot of times they look at me, uh, short Hispanic guy, like what? Own it. But that should be my strength, not my weakness. It is so, your strength. So I, you're a Latin badass. I try to be. No, you are. Thank you. I appreciate that. You are what you are. Thank you. Um, my last question would be for people wanting to write a book about something that they, they're passionate about, they're interested in, what would you tell them? Don't talk about it. Just write it. Do it. Write it down. Write your little story. Start writing. Don't, uh, don't not write. There you go. Get on the computer and write. Stop talking about it. Stop thinking about it and just write. Put it together. There you go. What's your, uh, what's next? What's next is uh, the next year of promoting this book, um, starting, a, starting a radio show called oh. the Unso- uh, 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 Unsuck Your Love Life with Eddie Rubin. Nice. And we're going uh, to be taking phone calls from uh, around the country and um, fixing people's love lives and helping them get over their hump. And really, the real hump and the real thing that is, is ego. So what stops a relationship from working or stops you from getting the love that you want or the sex that you want and all that's ego. So as soon as people start dropping their ego and apologizing for shit and you know, making up and giving a hug when you didn't want to give a hug, you know, connecting physically and mentally together and making it better and fixing it. So you either are mad, you stay mad, or you release it. Okay. Cool. So I hope you'll invite me to come watch you on the radio show. Woo! That would be interesting. Woo! I'd I'd love to see you work. That would, that would be really cool. Oh yeah, I, I'm I'm looking forward to. It. I'm I'm I don't know who I'm going to bring on, but I'm going to bring a co-host on, and we're going to do all that. And we got I got other exciting, wonderful things happening in, in my life and in uh, in my endeavors. Cool. Well, I I hope we stay friends. We will. Because uh, Daniel you, Garza, your your energy Garza. is 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 magnetic. It, it's 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 contagious yeah. I, I dig that I could use that right now um, for everybody listening and or watching uh, Eddie Rubin has been with us today talking about his book Unsucked Your Love Life uh, it's out on Amazon right now go check it out and if you can't find it go to my Facebook page put it together podcast and the link will be there along with the video that we talked about in the introduction uh, go check that out where else can they find you that's it we're out on Amazon. We're going uh, to. We're starting retail in a couple months, so we should be at Urban Outfitters by November. Okay. So all urban. But you have Outfitters. a website, and we have a website. Unsuck your love life. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Unsuckyourlovelife dot com. And they can contact you there. They can copy, there. T- contact me through there. All right, cool. Because we we'd love to have. I I I, I want to. I'm picturing you doing a reading at a, at a bookstore. Yeah. Just. 
get in the whole place energized. Yes. You, thank you for bringing your energy to my place. Thank you for getting off work and, and still having the energy to do this. I appreciate All it. All day. Any last words? I was up, at, I was up at 6, then sure. 7. Then I, uh, my last words is uh, uh, you know, follow through, execute. execute. Execute your execute what's inside. You know, uh, Release it and let, let the world enjoy it and let yourself enjoy yourself. Let yourself enjoy yourself. There you go. I like That's that. That's what I say. All right. For everybody watching, it has been Eddie Rubin uh, with Unsuck Your Love Life, the book. Go check it out Unsuck on Amazon. Unsuck Your Love Life. Uh, if you're listening Stop to this, sucking it up. If you're listening to this on the podcast and you're like, who is this dude? Go over to the YouTube page. Uh, look for Daniel G. Garza and you'll see the video. Follow us also on Instagram and, you, and Twitter for Tell. more information. Tell. For now, I want to thank Eddie for being here on the show. Uh, Mr. Kevin Moyer is my producer for all his social support. Thank Kevin. you, sir. And everybody else watching, this is Daniel Garza saying, hey, put it together. Boom. <coughs> What's the show called? Put it together. Put it together. Okay. Ready? Three, two, one. Hey, everybody. This is Daniel Garza. Welcome to another episode of Put It Together. I'd like to start as usual thanking my producer, Mr. Kevin Moyers, for all his help and support. Thank you, sir. Inviting all of you to check us out at abnormalentertainment.com, where you can find all the shows on the network. Make sure to check me out at Put It Together Podcast on Facebook, where you can find the links, pictures, and other information about my guests. So go check that out. Also, follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube, where you can see uh, live, uh, I'm sorry, the recording of the video uh, of the podcast and uh, just other information. So go check it out. I won't keep this intro too long. I want to introduce... Eddie, hi, Eddie. Hello, How are you doing, Mr. Sir? Daniel Garza, everybody, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Daniel Garza, Daniel Garza. We, we nice. brought put him, it together. He brought a missionary guest with him tonight. How are you doing, sir? Good, excellent. Thank uh, you for so much for having me, buddy. My pleasure, man. Uh, I met Eddie because he works down the street from the apartment. I run Rita and, in Laguna Beach. And we were walking back from having breakfast or something, and he was outside and. For all of you who have followed me for a while, you know that I, I used to work promotions. So I'm a sucker for people who are promoting and advertising. So he was like, come in the store, come in the store. And I was like, let's go in the store. Let's just go and look. That's right. Um, which I'm still in love with that jacket that I tried on. I have to go back and get that jacket at some point. Uh, but talking over, you mentioned your, uh, your book. Yeah. I gave you my card and you, you mentioned me the book. We you, mentioned the book. And you were like, I want to be on your show, and, and here we are. Here we are. How's your day? How are you doing? Excellent. I woke up. That's good. It's we, the best way to start a day. Isn't it? Yeah. Because if you wake up dead, that's kind of sad. I would be pissed. That, that would be really mad. I would be pissed. Because I have I a lot work. of cute t-shirts that I want to wear, so <laughs> exactly. it sucks. Oh, man. But waking up is, uh, for me, the best thing. And then, then I can start my day. But really, uh, I, I don't take for granted that a lot of people don't, and yeah. that uh, life, life is fleeting. And to really live every morsel of every moment of every life. That's beautiful. Yeah. That's awesome. Uh, before we start, yeah. you mentioned in our pre-interview uh, that on today when we're recording the show, we're recording the show for you, all you watching or listening yep. on September 19th, yep. 2018. Yep. Today is a special day for you. Today is September 19th, 1985. Okay. I moved to California with my mom. That's awesome. Where from? From Detroit, Michigan. Wow. And... I didn't know what was going to happen. I lived 17 years in Detroit, Michigan, and it was awesome. I loved growing up there. I loved the neighborhoods. I loved the people I grew up with. I loved all my schools. And life was what it was. You know, it was diverse. And um, me and my, I have a twin brother. My mom raised us. Unfortunately, we lost my father at, in 1969. And, uh, you know, we, we made it through life. And then when I got to 17 years old, uh, September 19th, 1985, and today's September 19th, I thought, oh, man. My mom said, we're going to California. And I said, bring the bong. <laughs> 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 you know, uh, you know, because back, you know, you're coming out of the, coming out of the 70s, you know, parents are sitting around the table, you know, de-seating <laughs> the marijuana. It's like a de-seating party. Really? Yeah, literally. Wow. Anyways, so she said, <laughs> uh, you know, there was nothing in Michigan that was holding me back personally. Where I said, oh, God, I'm going to miss this. I'm going to miss that. I'm, I was with my mom all the way. So awesome. I said, let's go. I don't know what's going to happen. Whatever. Let's go. I'm ready. 
That's so cool. we went, and that was 33 years ago today. Well, congratulations. And there's just no turning back on it all. Mm-hmm. I, wouldn't do it, I wouldn't do it differently, ever. Now, I was going to say your last name, but I didn't ask you beforehand how Ruben. you pronounce it. Ruben. You pronounce Ruben. Eddie Ruben. Ruben. Okay. Nice Jewish boy. I actually shouldn't be doing this interview because it's Yom Kippur, <gasps> but that's a whole other issue. Okay. And we w- we'll get into that. Okay. But we don't, we, we don't, we don't place um, labels anymore. Okay. And we'll get into that. I don't want to... Uh, as long as it's cool with you, it's cool with you. Yes. No, okay. no, I'm talking about Judaism itself, Christianity itself, Catholicism itself, oh, okay. all that stuff that we label. That's a whole other That's show. That's a whole other show. Yeah, <laughs> and, and we, we need to do a panel show on that. Yes. So we can have a real discussion. I'm down. I'm down. Yeah. I will keep you on, on mind for that one. But let's let's start talking about it. So, uh, Eddie Rubin. Yep. How do you put it together? Uh, we put it together, first of all, with, you know, with the first and foremost. You have to have a foundation, you know. There's a foundation in life for what you do. And what is that foundation inside? What drives you every single day to succeed in something, to do something, to make something big in your life, to think about legacy early, to think about future early, to think about the present early, to think about it all. So... You know, putting it together was first putting it together inside. Who am I inside me, and how do I want to live? I want to live in the moment. I want to love the moment. I want to speak my piece, my piece, and I also want to be, speak my opinion. You know, I want to have uh, my opinion is strong, and uh, I wanted it to always be known in life. So I don't hold back. That's part of putting it together. I say what I mean. I mean what I say. That's part of putting it together. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So all these things, you know, what is putting it together in the first place? Well, getting ready. Is it putting it together to uh, do better in a relationship? Is it putting it together to do better in a business or, uh, uh, or your career? What's putting it together? And it's putting it together for a lot of things. It doesn't just mean success in, uh, in business, but it also means success in relationships. And um, if it's not the success in relationships, uh, it's, and it's a lack of success in relationships, then you've got to put it together in those two. Okay. Can I get well, an amen? You, well, you talked about <laughs> what you just said, you, which is one thing that I totally believe in, is the foundation. You got to have a strong foundation for whatever you do, or it will not succeed. Yep. What's in Eddie Rubin's foundation? What's What's the mixture of? Uh, my foundation is foundation of confidence. Right. Uh, confident in my abilities and what I bring to the world. So okay. whatever gift has been given to me whether it be uh, public speaking, whether it be in sales, whether it be in sales consulting, which also we do that, whether it be in authorship. What am I good at and how do I, and how do I produce that? How do I make that happen? And yeah. follow through on whatever's my passion inside. So it was my passion to write a book, which is why I'm here. Right. Unsuck Your Love Life. I said it. <laughs> Unsuck Your Love Life. And we're going to talk about the book in just a yeah, minute, but, yeah, because uh, he's going to read for us from mm. from the book. But well, what I'm saying is, the so foundation is confidence. confidence. Foundation is is fa- is is uh, doing and not and, and not thinking and dreaming. Doing has been my my whole thing in my life. We, whatever it was, I do. So okay. if it's writing a book, uh, I, I can say that I was a good student because I wasn't. I was an awful student. <laughs> yeah, my mom. Took me to school in eighth grade and took me to the teachers and went to every teacher. Can you get him through? Can we get him to ninth grade? I, I saw. I saw. It's all D minuses and Fs. Can we get our boy through to eighth You know, but that was my journey scholastically. I was a, a spaz. I was not scholastic and I was a spaz and I'm okay with it because I, I, I still feel the same as when I was a kid. You know, there's something inside of me that is different, I believe. And everybody else has a little difference in life. But my right. foundation is confidence. My foundation is following through on the ideas and dreams and goals that I have in my heart and tapping into my talents. Tapping into what I do best. I play the drums. Well, I tap into it. I, I use the drums. I play the drums. I do it. I rollerblade. So I rollerblade because I played ice hockey from 1975 to 1985. Okay. So... Those things that I could do, like rollerblade and all those wonderful things that I can, do, you know, that you get to do in life really well. So I do a lot of stuff really well because I follow because I because I did it and do it. Okay. Now I'm not never been an author before, but now I'm an author. That's awesome. So where does the 
Where does your confidence come from? My confidence, I think, personally, is given to me. I don't know why I have the ability to deal with humanity the way I do and the way I spoke to you walking by in a store because I'm able to break the wall, the barriers between two human beings very quickly. Yeah. I'm, I'm zero to friend faster than pretty much anybody in the planet. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We, it was, I knew the moment we started talking, I was like, we're going to connect. This is going to work out somehow. So yes. congratulations on that. Woo! Yeah. And it's my chutzpah, because i got to thank me a lot of the times, because I wouldn't talk, you know, you would have walked by, no one would have said something. No one would have talked to you. But what I do is I just talk. And I don't, I'm not afraid. So I'm not afraid, I don't have a fear for people. I'm not afraid of big, scary guys. I'm not afraid of guys with beards, or I'm not, you know what I'm saying? Everybody's equal to me. Yeah. I'm, I, I, everybody's my equal. So as long as everybody's my equal, I treat everybody as my equal. I speak to people that, I, uh, that most people speak to. I speak to situations that most people wouldn't speak on. Mm-hmm. To the people you want to say those things to. A woman, a friend of mine yesterday said, and she has four kids. Her kids go to my kids' school. We've known her for years. They have twins. I'm a twin. Blah, 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 blah. So he goes to school and she says, well, we're, we're, we're changing Kylie's uh, teacher. We just don't feel that. It, we don't know what's going on. And she's calling. I said, go talk to the teacher. I know, I was, I wanted to, I was thinking, I said, hold on, go talk to the teacher. Go speak to the person that you have in any issue with in your life without fear and get it off your chest. Right. Say what you mean. And she's like, yeah, you're right. And if there's, if there's anything that I get out of this life is that I've thus far got to say what I wanted to say to the people I wanted to say it to. Whether they liked it or they didn't. Yeah. It, do, it doesn't... We say... I've spoken about it on my show. I, I'm clean and sober. And it's about... You don't... It's not your business what other people think. You just handle yourself to the best you can. And Yeah. Without apology. If you're... If you don't have ill will in what you say. So... Let's take, go back in the story a bit. Because now we've determined your foundation. So you're a teen... In California, you made it to ninth grade, uh, I'm guessing. <laughs> I made it to ninth grade. <laughs> grade. Okay. Then we made it to the senior year, which came. Which came. And then what was, uh, what did you want to be? Did you have I was a drummer. Dreams? Okay. I'm a drummer. Okay. So I came out of Michigan. Everybody knew me as a drummer. You know, and when I got to California, everybody said, uh, started calling me an actor. So in high school... I was billed as, you know, because I have personality and I can, I'm animated and all that. I said, but I never thought about acting in Michigan. So I did a couple plays. I did The Wizard of Oz, but the Oz or the Wizard was a rabbi. Oh, nice. (laughs) I was a nice Jewish boy finding the rabbi. Oh, rabbi. (laughs) And then. So. So we came out, no, so we came out to California, and I'm playing the drums. And then in 19, February, around February, March '86, I had my drums in my mom's car, and my mom got hooked up with this guy. And then she took the car with the drums in it. People saw my drums in the car. They made them their drums. They went on tour with my drums, and they kind of threw the whole thing off. And then I got some more drums, but it wasn't the same. But then. You know, after the uh, after the calling, after people kept, you know, Eddie, you should be an actor. You should be an actor. You know, I'm like, well, maybe I should be an actor, because I never thought about it, but I am funny. Yes. So, so I went for it. I started. I I got headshots. I got with an agent, and then in 1990, I moved to Hollywood. Okay. And on my first day in Hollywood, I was greeted by Scientologists. Oh. <laughs> Do you have you read Dianetics? <laughs> Anyways, so I got Dianetics before. Let's go back to 87 Dianetics. That's a whole other thing. Okay. I, I, I don't play part of it. Um, and then in 1990, uh, we moved to, moved to Hollywood on, a, on, a, on the pursuit of an acting career. A pursuit. Didn't know what was happening. No, was, oh, you don't know what was happening. Nothing. Didn't know nothing. Trying to get an agent. Trying to do this, that, that. In 1991, I, uh, uh, I was still in, I was in Hollywood on Yucca Street. One street north of Hollywood Boulevard between Wilcox and, I- and Highland. Yeah. Boom. Right in the heart. Right there. 1990, yeah. 91. Um, and then in 1991, I, I went on uh, Love Connection. Way. Are you yes. serious? 
With Chuck Willery. Yes. You remember? I did. Welcome to Love Connection. Yes. Where old-fashioned romance meets modern-day technology. <laughs> where you hear all the intimate details of a first date. Sometimes our dates end in a happy ending. I love you. I love you. <laughs> Some other times there's uh, just an ending. Bitch, shut up. <laughs> but it's always unpredictable when two strangers meet. Trying to make that love connection. And now... Here's our host, Chuck Willery. <laughs> <laughs> we love you, Chuck. And how did you do on the show? It was great. I went on a date, you know. We did everything. We did some I did some mud wrestling. <laughs> I did some mud wrestling. Someone put up some money for me. They didn't talk about that on the show. They cut that out, but she brought a boyfriend, tried to start a fight with me during the show. I was like, what the fuck's going on? Oh my god. This is drama, but it was fun. We had a good time. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> so that cool. was like my first entrance into some kind of television, some kind of something on TV where I'm nationally and everybody saw it, everybody recognized me, and no one forgets it. Yeah. So, and still to this day. So, and I reconnected with my niece or my sister because of it. It's like that show did wonders for me. Wow. It was really something special back then. And that, and that got um, in living color. In living color, interested and in putting me in the in the show. It didn't happen. I never ended up there, but I was on their standby for the show from that tape. Oh wow! Flash forward, ninety one. Meet a girl, Latin girl, from uh, the Dominican Republic at at of all places, a modeling seminar where they're trying to get you to pay for classes yeah. and pay for pictures. That's where she was. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. You're doing great. Is that okay? Okay. So uh, uh, there she was. And I'm looking at the audience and I'm looking around because I'm trying to be there. I'm looking at some hot girls. I'm like, okay, I'll go to somebody out invited me to the seminar. There's got to be next thing you know, this hot Latin girl. She's so sexy. And I, I was on stage doing something. They were trying to comb through our hair and shit. And I, at that time, I had a little bit of hairspray with my hair spray. Back. <laughs> Everything was happening. Uh, just trying to keep it together. And there she was, that hot Latin girl. And said, any other, any other contest? Anybody want to come up and 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 and, and talk to the hair and get the, your hair done a little bit on stage? And I said she does. And she's like, no, no. I'm like, get her, bring her up. I said, get her up. We got her on stage, and she's in the and she's in the chair, and they're fucking yanking because she got a little hairspray too. It was 1990. Still, right. it's 91. Right. She's straight off the she's straight off the boat. Ah, uh. <laughs> Dominican Republic. So we she's got, fresh. She's fresh. Gap, full inch gap in her teeth. Just a full inch. You're like, you, honey, that's okay. You're pretty. But you got a gap. She closed that later. <laughs> <laughs> and got some boobs po- post me. Uh, anyways, so now, there, you, there you go. I, I, I fucking said, hey, listen, if you need anything, you don't want to get with her. I said, hey, if you need anything, let me know. I'm going to give you my number. Call me. If you're ever in a jam and you ever have a problem, don't hesitate. No cell phones. Right. Not yet. Not yet. Yeah. No pagers. Right. We're right oh, yeah, there. Right. Just right there. Right. Right there in the, in the midst of a little bit of pager. Yeah. Not there yet. We're right there. Right there in the pagers. J J and J beepers. I'm J and J beepers. Come to my store and I get you a good deal for J and J beepers. <laughs> You're good, man. You so, that? so who did she turn out? To be? So, she called, huh? I mean, who did she become in your life? She called me. Yeah. And I started, ta- uh, I started picking up the pieces of her now fresh off the boat life here in America. And I said, I'm going to tell you what's what, who's who, and how to do it. I, I, I'm going to guide you. I'm going to guide you right to my penis. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, which is true. I was trying. I, you know, whatever I had to do to get that, it was going to happen because she was hot, exotic, wonderful, beautiful, sexy, awesome, with a thick accent. Do you like the... Okay, he told me like, okay, and she was like, you know, told, so like, no, I'm not stupid. No, I'm not stupid. I know you're not stupid, but just chill out. Okay, but I'm not stupid. <laughs> so, hmm. so, um, anyways, so, so we became friends. I was driving around. I was carting her around. I was forgetting about my own life just to be around this girl because she's so hot. How am I going to land it? I had other obligations. I got an apartment I got to pay for. I just moved. I'm on my own. <coughs> so, mm, 
Am I rambling too much? No, no, no. I'm just. I, I, I have the feeling this woman turned out to be something important in your. Well, yeah, the part of the story. whole journey. Yeah, absolutely. What are you talking about? She. I'm kidding. She was. Uh, so we kept going. One. I was. I was. Uh, I was. I would always try to hold her hand while she's in the car with me, and I was touch her. She said, "Don't touch me! Don't touch me! Okay? <laughs> Leave me alone. Okay, I just dry." Okay, okay, calm down, calm down, all right. So she'd always be like, she, and then one time I said, I, I touched her, I wanted her to hold her hand. I said, don't touch me, okay? You can't touch me. Only my boyfriend can touch me. He can touch me wherever he wants. I said, oh, man, I'm going to be her boyfriend. <laughs> so this is, this is the game we're playing. Huh? You said this is the game we're playing. This is the game we're playing, that's right. So within probably not even a week, she was in my she was in my place in my apartment on my bed, and uh, I uh, how do you say it? Screwed uh, the shit out of her. <laughs> no, anyway, no, no, I, I put it down. Actually, I was a man. I took I took the woman. I took that hot, gorgeous Latin woman. I fucking took her. I made her mine, nice and vulnerable. So she had to be a little. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> she was, you know, she was had had no place to stay anyway. So she, I'm. <laughs> God. <laughs> Pretty much. She got to a point where the guy that she was with that she didn't want to be with who brought her, brought her to America on false pretenses. Really? Yeah. Shit got thick. So once it got thick, she only had one place to turn because now she's in America. She couldn't go back as a failure to the Dominican Republic. She came here to be a model, but it was under false pretenses. And now she had me. After all that, I hadn't touched her yet. Wow. Boom. She came over that night. That night, I made love to her. And it was off the chain. I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> I would she's expect like, nothing she's like, She's like, I love you. I love you. I love you. I'm like, I love you. <laughs> I love you, too. Joe, did you I guys we last? Stayed, we were, <clears throat> she moved in. Yeah. And we were together for the next four years. And in 1992, February 24th, we got married. Wow. You know, for her to enjoy the... The fruits of the country. The benefits, yes. By the, you know. But uh, anyways, um, and she, I, and then I took her into under my wing, and I got her, instead of pursuing my acting career, which was what I, what I was supposed to be doing, I was helping her, and I, and I got her into the business, and I got her my agent, and my agent up getting her work, and not me! Oh, wow. Because <laughs> she was so hot. She booked fucking commercials, Panasonic, Sony. Pepsi, all that stuff. She fucking worked commercials, music videos. Oh, you, I got her music videos right now. As a matter of fact, she's in a music video that Jennifer Lopez was just a little dancer in from uh, from uh, in, Living, in Living Color. Wow. Yeah, that was in 1992. Wow. So is she still no 93. Is she still in she the got business? Me, huh? Is she still in the business? Yes. Yeah, somehow. Yeah. She she went off into the Latin Latin market. Okay. Almost in the same market. <laughs> All right, hold on a second. So it lasted four years, and and then it lasted four years, and she became jealous, and every and, and, and she became that lunatic, uh, lunatic Dominican girl. And I lived with my best friend uh, Steve Hunter, and we lived together. He was like a rock and roller from back in the day. He was from uh, Beaumont, Texas. Uh, you know, good old boy, yeah. love the Lord. You know, everything's cool. We're buddies. But all of a sudden, she started putting a wedge between us. Uh, I see the way you look at him. I'm like, what? I'm not stupid. Okay? I'm not born yesterday. I see how you look at him. I was like, okay. Are you fucking... I was like, are you kidding me right now? Are you kidding, right? She said, no kidding. It's no job. I'm like, shut the fuck up. You're so stupid. It's the dumbest thing I've ever heard of in my life. It's my boy. We jam. We're fucking... No, 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 no. I could, okay, I see you, okay? I see you. Okay, I look at you. I look how you look at him. I look at you, look, look, look. I'm like, no, you don't look at nothing. That's my boy. So then she started alienating. It. Anyways, next thing you know, she th she's jealous of this, jealous of that. Oh, my God. Ah, ah, ah. Trying to get out of a situation. Now, finally, in 1995, I get her own apartment. I get her own apartment. Send her on her way, pat her on her butt, never touch her again after. That was it. Done. Wow. Moved on in life. She, we moved on. I had four years. It took me out of the game. That year, I got my massage therapy license of all things. I always wanted to be a massage therapist because I'm like one of those massage prodigies. Nice. Yeah. So I got the job. I, I, I did that. I shaved my head in the same year. 
And all of a sudden, I look like little mini Vin Diesel. Yeah? <laughs> Better attitude, but yes. Right. <laughs> yeah. You get it? So, anyways, you're talking about your sh- the, the name of your show, which is? Put it together. Exactly. Put it together. So how would I put it together in life? With a relationship or a job or making something happen. So in 95, how did I put it together? I put it together. I got my, I got my, I got my uh, massage therapy license to, yeah. to massage. And I ended up being the personal masseur to Mr. Muhammad Ali. Oh, wow. And that's a whole nother full circle of my life. Because I graduated high school with Miriam Ali, May May Ali. May May Ali is Muhammad Ali's first child. Wow. So here I am, great friends with Muhammad Ali's daughter. Now I'm massaging her father uh, that has nothing to do with her. And it was the most wonderful, awesome experience coming right out of school as a massage prodigy to now massaging the number one figure on planet Earth. Wow. I'm in a room with Muhammad Ali for three months. The year that he did the Olympics, the year that he carried that torch, I got him prepared. Is it possible for you in in that moment to acknowledge the competence that 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 needs, that that requires to be in that room and do your job? Do you, I mean, I, I, I acknowledge and I acknowledge my confidence the whole way. I'm very uh, self aware of what I what I do and what I bring. Because it's difficult sometimes for people to be in a very universe-gifted situation and not acknowledge it and walk away and not really realize what an opportunity they had, uh, what a story in their life. I fully acknowledge it. Does that make it. sense? I, yes, I feel I acknowledge it. I immersed myself. I'm getting chills. <laughs> I, I immersed myself in it, and it was unbelievable. And I'll tell you, Muhammad Ali said these words to me. A couple of things he said to me. He said... I'm massaging this chicken. I'm massaging China. I'm massaging Japan, London. I'm massaging all over the world. But you the best masseuse in the world. Wow. <laughs> Great. That's awesome. Literally, and I'm doing his feet, and I'm a, a, by being a drummer and knowing the human body and knowing the anatomy and the muscle structure and who and who universe what universally hurts in the in the human body whether it's on your legs and what and where it's all connected those things i know automatically so part of it is called topotment topotment is a part of massage that you use with beats in your hand oh <laughs> so i would do Massage with my hands on his back. And I would go. And I'd do that on his muscles. Wow. And he would go. He would lift his head. He, he would lift his head when I, was, I would do it with his feet. That's what I was doing. I was doing the pump on his feet. He would be like this. He'd go like, man, you fast. <laughs> that is so awesome. <laughs> so, uh, how old were you at that point? I was 27. 1995. What? And, and knowing you a little bit more now, I, you don't have an ego. You, you just have a big personality, which is very different. Because people with egos try to be interesting and just can't pull it off. But you have a big personality, which I, I, I totally adore. That's awesome. Um, or you wouldn't be here right now. Um, as a 27 year old, we already talked about confidence, but what does it do for you personally, other than confidence? What what does what moments that, like that uh, moments like that only confirm my gift that I tapped into and okay. turned into a semi career? Awesome. That's all. It confirms that what I all I do is get to express myself. One of my ways of expressing myself is the ability to to massage, to manipulate muscle. To a point where it literally changes people's lives at that moment. Whether it's a person on the street that I just met who I see rubbing their shoulder and I stop and I said, you know what? I could fix that in about 80 seconds. 
And I do. I have someone ran into someone the other day. I forgot. I, I hadn't seen her a couple, maybe years. I don't even know her. I only met her once, but her back was hurting. She came in my store with somebody. I say, have a seat. I'm going to take care of you. I put her in the seat. I saw her the other day. She says, you completely <laughs> helped me at a time when my back was the worst. You fixed me. Thank you. Wow. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. So that kind of thing, that's, that's all I care about. That, that has to be a confirmation that you're on the right path in life. Like, no matter where you're going, you're on the right path. That's a confirmation that I get to, I have the gifts that I know I have. People, everybody has their own their own gifts, and who, how, and what, and when they tap into what they do in life, whether it's a gift of coding for uh, software or computers, or it's a gift for art on canvas, or if it's a gift for doing stand-up comedy, or whatever it is, a gift of doing clerical work could be a gift. Yeah. People live their whole lives to file, and they do it with fervor. Yeah. And they don't. They can't, if it's one out of place, it's no good. So, do, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, totally. So, there's people who work in a career their whole lives, and they they've tapped into something. But whatever it is, I don't know the level of consciousness that people have. My level of consciousness from child till now has been my saving grace and my and the beauty of my life there there's a duality as i'm watching you speak there is this very zen peace that comes with your energy and then right behind it there's like the thrust like boom like i'm going to give it to you it's going to sound weird, but I'm going to give it to you slow first, and then I'm going to let you have it. Yeah. And um, I, the, one of the reasons I'm relating to you, I, I, and we haven't talked about this, but I do energy work. I do Reiki, and I do card readings, and um, I've worked with energy for several years now. And I've done Reiki work on people who later come back, or as soon as I'm done, they're, they're crying. And they're like, oh my God, Like you made me open up to places that I didn't think. So that that makes me reassure, like you with your massage, like it reassures me that I'm doing the right thing. But I, I have I have self doubt that when I walk away, maybe a day later, I'm like, what am I doing with my life? Have you ever been through something like that? Do you ever go through personal doubt moments? It's a personal doubt. No. No, not personal doubt. Nothing's the end all be all to me in life. So if how do anything, you? And I think, and if I want to do, you know, if there's something I want to do, like I built a company, I sold a company. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm not. I, I, there's things I want to do, but I also have three kids and a wife. That whatever I do now at this point is towards is right. towards my legacy as a father and a husband and uh, uh, that man in this e eternal, wonderful existence. So. What am I setting up? What am I doing now? And everything I have to do is a choice that always re reflects on my, on my family. So what do I do first that will gi give the best first monetary legacy for my family, wealth, right, and spiritual, personal, communicative legacy that I give to the com them knowing that I'm committed to their lives and and everything that has to do with it, including but not limited to being there with my wife as a family unit. That's pretty... Does that make sense? Yeah. So, because we're going to read out of the book, I wanna, I'm want to. i going to I'm gonna push ahead. There's Usually I do this at like the 45-minute mark, but I'm going to do it at the 30-minute mark. Uh, what words of wisdom would you share with people like me? that 
we know our worth, we know what we can do, but we were lacking those last bits of confidence. Well, you you can't create it, you can't conjure it, you have to tap into it. Okay. So, that's something that you have to uh, make a conscious, bold decision to believe it and whatever you do to speak it. So, you know, you, you have to be confident behind your words. But behind, but, but behind your motives and what you're doing. But everybody's different in life. You see, the hierarchy of the human being and the, and, and the depth of the consciousness of that 7 billion people on the planet, well, you're talking about a lot of layers between, between almost zombieism, meaning walking the planet with no forethought, no in no dissection of thought no observation of actions and reactions and situations and all kinds of things that happen in the human existence in life socially you know mother father sister brother cousins aunts uncles friends everybody that's you know in your whole circle in your in that in that whole little life so you know, I can give advice about being confident. Some people aren't going to make it there. But that's not their fault. You, there's a, there's a, sometimes a, a, there's a, a, born, a born something, and everybody's born with something. Right. Or without something. <laughs> there's no rhyme or reason, but I have been able to help people with their confidence over the years through my work, through my consulting, through my sales, through my authorship. So I've been able to enhance people's lives somehow, way or shape or form and give them the confidence and pass it on to let them have some, everybody have a little bit in life. But yet, uh, you know, no man is better than no woman. No woman is no better than no man. No man is better than no man and no woman is better than no woman. <laughs> So, even though there's a social hierarchy in life, meaning who gets what, what's your self-awareness, what's your consciousness level, what are you tapped into, and what are you not, both professionally, you know, people who live like, you know, almost Neanderthals in life, like they, they don't, there's no, there's no real self-awareness, there's no, there's no, Awareness of of consequence and all, all the kind of things that people go through in life, living in a family, living together, not living together. Who's divorced? Who's not divorced? Who's together? Who's not together? What's the you know the dynamic in life of getting along? So, confidence is 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 you know personal, but it's everybody everybody can't attain a certain confidence because of how they were born. Well, I'll tell you this much. Being around you just this last like 30 minutes or so has rubbed off a little bit. Not to mention the fact that you... I'm very big about me the messages that come to me or, or, or are delivered. And as you were talking about uh, the passion of things, you pretty much described my career life. I started working in an office doing clerical work. And I'm about to start a stand-up comedy workshop in about a week so you just kind of part, like I was like how the fuck did you know all this like wait a minute dude um, and so he, thank you I, 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 I was listening and I was like he just pretty much like the span of my career of 40 of 37 years yeah. of working yeah. like that's my career I started in an office yeah. and my next chapter is stand up comedy yeah so yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I'll do your show too. Yeah, thank you. I'll come do some time. Uh, well, I'm, I'll let you know when when my TV special is coming on. Absolutely. Yeah, because I'm already thinking about the TV special. I love it. Um, but I don't want. I want to. I want to make sure we have enough time. So, yes. for those of you listening and or watching, uh, this is Eddie Rubin with his book, uh, Unsuck. Uh, unsuck your, your love, love life. life. Uh, you unsuck your love life. 
Stop sucking it up. Uh, suck your love life. Stop sucking it up. See, there's already a jingle for it. And for those of you who follow me on Facebook already, if you go to the Put It Together podcast page, there is a video from YouTube that Eddie did to promote the book. Absolutely. Uh, which is very cute. And I, 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 you have to watch it. I don't want to describe it. You just have to go watch it. Um, so how did this book come to? Where did it come from? This book has had, a, has had another incarnation. And uh, this book came from me being tired of the lack of confidence that men had in their relationships with women. Okay. So, in the, where, I, where I'm, uh, my profession is, I deal with a lot of men. And uh, through the years, it's been over 20 years, that I've dealt with uh, men, uh, men's clothing, uh, changing men's lives, you know, doing all kinds of sorts of wonderful things to help the male in his fashion existence. Okay. And in those journeys, I met a lot of guys who aren't happy in their relationships. They're not, do- it's not working for them. First of all, they're not getting blowjobs. Why are you married and not getting blowjobs? That's the question I had to ask. How many times? You're what? You're married and not getting blowjobs. Well, isn't that what marriage is for? Isn't that part of it? Isn't that the crusp? Isn't that the foundation? I mean, isn't that first until you can't do it anymore? How many times I had to hear guys not doing it? They're not having enough sex. She's not giving it up. She won't let me eat. I'm like, because they talk to my boys. Actually, everybody that I meet, like I know them for a lifetime. So we get right into stuff real quick with the people. I connect very quickly with people. So because of that, I've been able to connect with thousands and thousands and thousands of people personally right. and their lives. Finally, one guy said one day, he was married, it's not happening, there's no foreplay. I'm like, I took him, grabbed him by the shoulders. I said, bro, don't compromise your penis. Okay? And then I thought, oh, there's a book. Don't compromise your penis. I'm going to write to my guys, my fellow men, and straighten them up a little bit. Tell it like it is. How to get, how to get your blowjob that you want. How to get your eat-out session that you love. Those types of things yeah. that make living wonderful, that make the human existence awesome. The sexual being that we are as human beings. Yeah. That's what we are. Okay. So, I'm like, I got tired of listening to these guys. I'm like, man, if I could live... I, I'm, then I'm doing good because daddy's still getting his. Well, there you go. You know, then on demand. <laughs> <laughs> right? I, I'm not going to speak. I'm right just now. saying. I'm just saying. On demand. Y'all order that. Y'all have that. Thank you so much and have a good day. We're married. Love you. Three kids. Boom. <laughs> still doing it, mama. And daddy's still in the mix, making it good. So the first book well, was not. That. So the first book was Don't Compromise Your Penis. And, how and I almost released that book, and I pulled back. I pulled out. <laughs> <laughs> no pun intended? No pun intended. Oh, okay. Pulled out of the situation. I said, you know what? Let me pull this book out. I, I, it's a little loud, voice-wise, in the book, what I was saying. But I also wanted to write the woman's version. If I'm going to do a men's version, let me do the male, the heterosexual male version uh, of, of a book for women, telling them what they need to do. If they want to unsuck their love life, love lives with us, ah, just in case they were wondering. Got it. So then I went on a journey and I wrote on. I wrote, "Don't compromise your vagina." Okay. So that- now I have two books. They're not, uh, and they're in the same kind of light. And I'm like, okay. And then I had somebody who wanted to do this book with me, and then he kind of said, you know, it's a little, it's a little much. And he kind of backed down and said, you know what, maybe it is a little much, but I, I like it the way it is. And then I tooled with, and, and remember, I, I don't live my life out of, out of dis- desperation. I don't live my life out of angst. If it ain't happening today, it's never going to, no. So I, I sat on it a little bit. I marinated in life. Other things happening, other things I want to do. So I put it aside. And then I decided, I want to do this book, but I want to combine the book. And I want to name it something else. And the first thing I thought of when somebody's relationship was bad was the relationship sucks. My love life sucks. I always hear, What's, how's your love life? And my love life sucks. How's yours? 
my love su- my love life sucks too. <laughs> Shit. So I said, well, why don't we unsuck your love life? And then I said, I'm going to put these two books together, and I'm going to unsuck people's love lives. That's why I have two lollipops sucking on lollipops. Lollipops growing in the grass and one big mouth about to suck all those lollipops. Got it. This is how I put it together. This is how I put it together. This is how I put it together. Subscribe to Put It Together on iTunes, Stitcher, and at abnormalentertainment.com slash put it together. Find Put It Together on Facebook and tweet Daniel at Lil Mesican, L-I-L-M-E-S-I-C-A-N. And for more podcasts, comics, books, movies, and more, head to abnormalentertainment.com. You've been listening to the Abnormal Entertainment Network.